so wonderful to feel you, see you. Aloha, Anna Marie. Welcome, welcome. Hi, Celeste. Welcome. Aloha, friends. Thanks for popping on with me. Hi, Anna Luisa. Welcome. Oh, hi. <laughs> so wonderful to see you guys. So this is totally a spontaneous uh, Instagram live. Hi, Norin. Hi, Corson. Aloha, aloha. Welcome, beautiful friends. Welcome, family. <clears throat> so, um, so this is totally a spontaneous Instagram live. <laughs> I miss you too. Um, and so I was, I was just having lunch, and I was just thinking, and I was like, what, what? I always think about you guys. I think about you guys a lot, and so I'm always like, what? what can I share that would be like the most helpful that just really feels like alive? What is, what is my, what is my divinely guided, um, offering for today? And so I was just tuning in and I, what popped into my mind, because this is how, what I do works. What popped into my mind was that, um, we're being offered an opportunity right now as a collective to up level, to ascend, if you will. And we're being given this time and space to really reevaluate what it is that we're doing with our lives, the habits, patterns, ways of being that we have been operating with, whether that's been conscious or unconscious, the relationships in our lives, the way that we participate in those relationships in our lives, and we're just really in this space. And there are three planets turning retrograde next week. So we're, we are in this space and we are going to continue to be in this space of reevaluating and being given this opportunity to do something differently, to make a pivot or make a shift, to rearrange things in our lives. So are you feeling like that? I would love to know. So drop me an emoji if you are feeling like that you, you are personally having the experience of really taking this time to reevaluate things in your life and you're kind of going through and weeding out different things. You're deciding to step into some new things. You're deciding to let go of some old things. So I love seeing so many amazing people coming in. So pop an emoji into the bottom or tell me something about if you are feeling, yeah, okay, I'm seeing the emojis coming in. So if you are feeling like you are being offered an opportunity to up level in different areas of your life. Yes. <laughs> yep. 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 Saturn return. Oh my goodness. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Listening. Yeah. Yeah. So <clears throat> yeah. So yeah, we're all being given this opportunity to reevaluate, to really come into this space of discernment and to step into our sovereignty and really acknowledge that we have a choice, that we are conscious collaborators and participants in the dance of humanity that we're being presented with right now. So I was just reflecting on different areas of my life where I have been um, really, really stepping up really shifting into what there's been huge times in my life when I decided to move to Hawaii. That was a huge one. Uh, when I decided to go full on into sound healing, Cindy, lots of healing vibes right now. Gary is in the dentist chair. <laughs> um, yeah, change your morning and evening ritual is just game changer for sure. So so the moments in my life when it was like huge up leveling was moving to Hawaii, deciding to shift into fully into sound healing. I took a break from my coaching work and um, really stepped into sound healing. And then it was a huge up leveling financially in the last two years where I was like, okay, 
I am done with this old pattern of, you know, feast or famine up and down. Like I would have good sales for a launch for a class or something. And then it would be like, whew, and I was just over it. I was like, okay, I cannot have this instability in my life anymore. I need to be focused. So I need to take that next, le next level up. So, so there have been different things that have happened at all of those different junctures. And what the pattern that I noticed was that, so just to give you guys a little bit of backstory if you don't know some of my stories. So in 2016, I moved from San Francisco to Maui and that was probably like a three year process. And so the first piece of what I have seen as this, this, this kind of process, I didn't know that I was going through it, but it's like now reflecting, I can see the patterns of what I have done to really ascend into the next level to kind of like pole vault into the next level in my life at different times. So the first one is like receiving the divine guidance, you know? So I didn't say, I'm gonna move to Hawaii. It was like, at that point, I was not thinking about doing anything like moving to a tropical place. And I, like Hawaii was not even on my radar. You know, I had done marine biology in the Bahamas um, in college. And so if I was thinking of like, you know, warm tropical ocean vibes, I was thinking like I wanted to do something over there. But it was just all of these synchronicities that started to come in around Hawaii. And so this is what I call like receiving the divine guidance. And so a similar thing happened when I decided to go fully into sound healing. So it wasn't like I decided, okay, now I'm going to do sound healing. It was that lots of different things in my life were falling apart. And I was also simultaneously had this opportunity of this transformational experience. There's so many stories here. I'm really trying to like keep it succinct. And I've told many of these stories on my blog and in my Instagram post. So you probably heard a lot of these stories before. And so I had this huge activation with my voice and it was through following this curious development with my voice and asking to, have other people help me to figure out what that was because I was just channeling these tones and I was not a singer or a musician. And then, then the opportunities came in from, from that. And, and so, so in both of these different situations, it's, I feel like the up leveling process begins first with being open to divine guidance really receiving the kind of the, the assignment from the universe about like, okay, I am becoming clear now that there are so many synchronicities happening that are pointing towards Hawaii. So I need to do my own. I always say it's like, you know, there are so many synchronicities that can happen until it's like, I was like, I need to take some action on my own Otherwise, I'm going to have like a book fall off the shelf and like give me a concussion or something. You know, it's like you get to the place where there are so many signs that are compounding on top of each other that you are like, I can't ignore this anymore. I have to take action because I'm really clear that this is an invitation that is coming from the universe. Yes, good. Yeah, you're being pulled to more to focus on music at the moment. Yes, yeah, yeah. So think of where you are right now. And this is really where it's like it's divine guidance. It's not that you are like, I am going to do that. And but that's the second step. So if you're there, don't worry, you're in a good place. So <laughs> good for you. Good. You too. Awesome. Awesome. So it's re being open to allowing your mind to be in this kind of soft and receptive state. This is where you are when you're 
washing the dishes or walking the dog or walking in the woods or just like when you're driving, you know, you're not really thinking and then ideas just come. And what I always do too is how I track, you know, a lot of people are like, did I think of that or was that divine guidance? So if I, cause you know, you could, if you, this is, this is where you have to get so aware. You have to be so present in your presence with yourself. So you watch where that thought came from. And if you cannot track where that thought came from, because one time, you know, you might have a thought and you're like, oh, well, I had that thought because I was thinking about that movie that I watched. And that was because I was thinking about that conversation that I had with that person. And that was because I was thinking about that thing that I saw on the internet, you know? And so if you can't track it back, then, or if there aren't that many steps, then you know that it's not something that came from some kind of thought process you were having. That was just how I got the inspiration to do this Instagram live. I was like, I need to talk about shifting up leveling, shifting from one level into the next. And I was just eating my lunch and I was like, where did that come from? Okay, that I wouldn't have thought about that, but let's go for it because that's the divine assignment. So, so yeah, so you're receiving this divine guidance and then from that divine guidance space, what comes next for me in the process of up leveling is that I receive the divine guidance and then I become really clear about what I desire. So I have the divine guidance that is nudging me into a action or an idea or a topic of study or mentoring with someone or doing a course or something like that. And then I become really clear about what I desire. So in this process with doing this Instagram live, I was like, okay, so I want to talk about, I'm getting this divine guidance that I should talk about ascending from one level to the next and up leveling and the different ways in which that's happened in my life. And am I going to write an Instagram post? Am I going to do a live? Am I just going to make an Insta TV? How, how am I wanting to express that? So in these examples that I've been sharing, like moving to Hawaii, I was like, okay, like I got the divine guidance and that's a much longer story, but I became clear that I wanted to move to Hawaii and that was definitely happening. You know, it was kind of like which island is it was still up for discussion, but I was really clear like, okay, yes, this is happening. I am mobilizing what needs to happen in order to get this done and I'm, I'm ready to do the work. So in the, in the shifting from the sound healing, it was like, okay, so now I'm being given into this space of being gifted these different um, opportunities to do sound healing. And I was like, I'm really clear that I wanna focus on crystal singing bowls. You know, I want to focus on holding and anchoring this. If I've been given this divine assignment of doing sound healing, I want my own, I've got divine will, and then I have my own personal will. And my own personal will is saying, I wanna focus on crystalline frequencies. So I wanna do the crystal singing bowls. I wanna have, like when I found it about the crystal pyramid or the crystal harp, I was in the singing, like angelic light language, as opposed to, you know, the other people or my partner who were more earthy, you know, they were, the gongs and the Tibetan, the Tibetan bowls, the metal, and um, like, you know, uh, drums and um, really kind of had this earthy frequency. So I got really clear about how I wanted to shift. And so in the same thing, like, you know, in shifting from when I had this, this financial upgrade, I was feeling the divine guidance of Number one, like, okay, I have big work to do in the world. I can feel that. I can feel this kind of like backlog of divine assignments that are going to require me to have prosperity. I am in order to step into these roles that I can see and sense and feel from my divine guidance, I am going to have to heal my relationship with money. I got really clear about that, that it was like, 
I have big things to do in the world. And in order for me to do these big things in the world, I have to be financially successful. Like it just, like the things that I want to do require that. So I was like, okay, I've got this divine, divine guidance. And then I have this clarity of desire of like, okay, I make a commitment. I make a commitment where I'm like, okay, I'm moving to Hawaii. Like I'm starting to talk about that. I'm telling people that's happening or I'm like doing sound healing. I'm, you know, actually facilitating ceremonies. I'm showing up and I'm doing that. Or I make a commitment where I'm just like, and this was like a personal ceremony where I was just like, I will let go of whatever needs to happen I will let go of any and all patterns, habits, ways of being, relationships, you know, old stories, like <clears throat> family stuff. It was like, I'm willing to let go of whatever it is. So you have your divine guidance, then you have the clarification of your own will, your own desire. You have divine guidance and then your divine will and then your personal will. And then there's this work around and it's not always this like step-by-step -step process i kind of hate those step-by-step -step processes but i this is a these are some patterns that i noticed that i thought could be helpful so um so then the next piece is really doing a lot of purging so it's like in order to take that next step in from one level of your life into another level of your life, you have to get light, right? You cannot take all of this old baggage that you've been carrying around with you into the next level. You have to, you have to drop that in order so that you can rise up to that next level. And so, you know, moving to Hawaii, it was like physical items. Like I tell this story back, all my life is in my Instagram. You can go back and find everything in my, about my life in my Instagram. That was like as long as I've been on Instagram. But I tell the story about how the great purge of 2015, it was the great purge of 2015, when I donated like 30 bags, something like ridiculous. I don't even remember how much it was, but it was so, I just decided, I was like, you know what? I wanna live in a place that is comfortable to my physical being. I don't wanna have to have gear to be able to be comfortable in my environment. So I had all of this super expensive like backpacking stuff and long underwear and hiking boots that was, you know, it was expensive. And so I didn't want to get rid of it because I thought that it was valuable. But the fact of the matter is it was not valuable to me because it was valuable to other people. Other people had told me that it was valuable, but I was just like, this is holding me down. And so I had to clear and purge books, videos, music, like it was just this massive purging. And like moving yourself across the Pacific Ocean is a huge deal. So you have to like get light in order to be able to do that. So, but then the same thing happened when um, I was deciding to focus on doing sound healing. And I was like, okay, I'm no longer, I, you know, I made this post, like I'm taking three more private clients and then I'm done. You know, I'm not gonna do private coaching anymore, which was something that had been the foundation of my business since it started. So I was like, I'm going to stop doing that so that I can focus my energy fully and completely on exploring sound healing as a career path. And then even within the financial upgrades that happened, it was like, okay, I was like, I am willing to let go of, and I knew, I knew at the time that one of the things that I was going to have to let go of was the relationship that I was in. Because it was just like, I was really had this felt sense that, and I've described this to him too, and he knows it very well. And we've had lots of sessions about it, you know, back when we were separating in 2018. But, cause I also am trying to make a point of never saying anything out loud about someone else that I haven't already said to them first, just a piece of integrity. Um, so 
I was just having this really clear guidance that like I was basically about to like drop into the fast lane and I needed to be able to just do that and that there were some kind of frequencies with him that were like in and out, in and out, in and out, in and out, like kind of, we called it, we call it the wiffle, the wiffle, the waffle. We call it the wiffle, no, it was called the wiffle. And I would say, oh no, I have to get out my wiffle bat. <laughs> yeah, if you ever played wiffle ball. Um, Cause the ball doesn't go in a straight line. So I knew that I was, that in order to really step into my power and to step into my sovereignty, and to really begin to create the legacy of work, the body of work that would also give me the financial stability that I was seeking, I needed to have both hands in. I, you know, it's like when you're in your car and you're gonna pull out into traffic, it was like, I need to have my, I need to be ready to go and I can't be, waiting for someone who isn't sure what they want. So I knew that that was part of the part of the purging process was was that clearing. And and so much happened with that too, you know, like I moved and every time you move, you're always purging more stuff. So so up leveling process, divine guidance, then clarifying that, solidifying that into your personal will, your personal desires that are being influenced by this divine guidance. And then it's really this process of, of purging and clearing that has to happen so that you can take that, that next level step. And so another piece, I just remembered this, another piece of the next leveling financially was I really had to look at my patterns around creating around selling my offers around how I'd done that in the past. And so these are three things that came through. One of them was that I recognized that in the past, I, the only time that I had enough courage and momentum to create a course, put it out there and sell it was when I was financially strapped. And so it was this financial lack that was mandating my creativity. And I was like, oh, get your fucking hands off of my creativity. Like, this is mine. Like, you fear, you cannot have this. You need to put your hands over there. Like, get your hands off of my creativity. I want to be creative when and how I want to be creative. I don't want to have to be creative because I need to generate income. So it was like, fuck that, no more of that. I get to do what I want. The other piece there, so these multiple parts of this, but some of the key parts were, I know, right? <laughs> so one of the other pieces was, um, one of the other pieces was that, where did it go? Um, okay, so what I was also noticing was that after I would, that I, I was like, whenever I was launching and selling a course, it was like I was full in. I had to clear my calendar. I put an autoresponder on my email. Like I canceled all of my plans. Like I just could not do anything else except sell the thing that I was selling. And then afterwards, when it was like this kind of like the energetic, like, nah, 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 and then the doors close and then it's like, ah. and then in the days following and the weeks following after that, I had this kind of emotional fallout and I would become tired and unfocused and at the time, I thought that it was because I was tired from launching and selling and being the cheerleader and you know. But what I actually discovered was that I wasn't tired. I just didn't have anything to get excited about. And when I didn't have anything to get excited about, I didn't have any focus and I didn't have any energy and I didn't have clarity about what I was supposed to do when I woke up in the morning. And so then I 
I was like, I don't have any energy because I don't have anything to do, you know? So it wasn't, it wasn't that I was actually tired. It was that I was just like disengaged. And so once I redefined that and I was like, oh, it's not that I'm actually tired. It's that I just don't have anything to do. So I reprogrammed that whole situation and I was like, oh, so I actually get energy, have purpose, have focus and discipline and enthusiasm for life when I'm promoting something that I'm excited about, whether it's my stuff or somebody else's stuff, when I'm promoting something that helps people, I feel life force running through me. And so I had to deprogram all of that. And then I, then I was like, I remember the very first time I did two launches back to back. That was in March of 2019. We did the, we did the shamanic star sound launch and then like there were three days between the doors closing of that one and the opening of remembering lemuria and i was on fire i was just like yes <laughs> this feels so fucking good to not have to have this kind of um like fallout period and just to be able to do what i love not have any story about it and help as many people as possible at the same time so um and then there's one other key piece that came in through there um i had this i just actually watched this video of mine recently where i was in Kauai and i was journaling and i was like what is it that i get what is it that benefits me from having any kind of any kind of scarcity mindset and i'll probably like find this video and post it again but if i can but what i found out was that i had stories that being in scarcity mindset being in a space of needing and wanting and not having um kept me clear because I had to be on my toes. So, okay, like, you know, when you're in tennis and you gotta like, you don't know where the ball is gonna come from, so you gotta be on your toes. But it was that being in a space of scarcity kept me on my toes and kept me creatively engaged because that was the old story that I had to be creating in order to receive financial abundance. Um, or that I ha yeah, that it was like financial scarcity mandated my creativity. And then it was like that being in scarcity keeps me sharp, keeps me on my toes, <clears throat> keeps me in my, in my creativity. And there was one other piece, um, that it was that being in scarcity, like kept me kept me honest or something and i was just like oh fuck that you know i was just like no i get to choose how i get to trust myself that was the huge piece it was like i get to trust myself so i don't have to have scarcity or lack decide for me about how I'm going to live my life and what kind of life I'm going to live, I actually get to decide myself what kind of life that I want to have. So huge pieces. Okay. So we have getting divine guidance. We have aligning with your own clarity of desire. We have deprogramming old beliefs and purging ideas, relationships, all of those kinds of things. Um, I don't know. I don't. Is that true? Not everybody can get into creative mode right away. I don't know if that's actually true. I don't know if that's actually true. <clears throat> I would say it's like really important to look at your stories around why you think you can't get into creative mode right away, because that happens for all of us who write Instagram posts. You know, it's like I don't sit <clears throat> and wait for the muse to arrive. And if she doesn't arrive, I'm like, well, I'm just not gonna post today. I'm like, it's like my, 
Dharma to post on Instagram. <clears throat> and so it's not, it's not, it's like you just have, this is where you have to get open, where it's like you're just, you invite the inspiration to come in. You have to invite it, right? Inspiration is an angel. And angels cannot engage with you if you do not invite them, if you do not ask them to come to play with you. So you have to be like, I'm ready. I'm ready. Like, what is the idea? What is the guidance? And you have to be looking all around and like, whether, you know, it's like dreams, you know, I've, I teach a lot about dream work and I have a, a really beautiful story of a friend who was like, well, I don't remember any of my dreams. And I was like, well, you have to invite them to come. You know, dreams are like wild animals. And so it's like, if you just like get up and go into your day, they run away. But if you sit and you wait for them with some bread and, and your journal, and so she sat there patiently breathing, waiting, inviting for 10 minutes, and then the dream came and she was able to remember the whole dream and write it all down. So it's like really inviting inviting the inspiration to come through. I mean, I'm just actually doing a class right now where one of our homework assignments is to think of 20 new business ideas. And she's like, if you can't think of 20, you can think of 30, <laughs> you know? So <clears throat> it's like, if you can't meditate for 10 minutes, then you need to meditate for 20 minutes. So that you are a creative being, like that is just, you know, you are God force inside of you. And so it's really inviting that divine inspiration to come through you. Yeah, so yeah, so, so just like let go of the old stories that sometimes it takes days for inspiration to come and just begin to move forward from this space with something, a new story. I'm ready to see things differently. You know, of course, the miracles always says, I'm ready to see things differently. Please, God, angels, universe, show me. I'm ready for the lightning bolts inside my head. I'm ready. I'm ready. I receive. Okay. So, so then in our path of, of up leveling and next leveling things, the next piece is what I do is investing in my future. So I make some kind of commitment to myself that is sending myself a message of like, we're doing this, we're doing this now. So that was moving to Hawaii. The thing that was making this investment in my future was, and a lot of times, so this involves a financial investment and there's different price points for everything. And I'll share many different ones. So when I was moving to Hawaii, the huge next level investment in my future was getting my animals um, through all of their uh, shots. So there's this whole process of moving animals from the mainland to an island, any island. Uh, and so it's this whole series of vaccinations and paperwork and it has to be done in this certain order and then they have to send out a blood test for antibodies and it's it's a it's a very lengthy and very pricey uh, adventure so i was like okay i'm beginning this process i'm going to do all of the shots i'm going to do all of the paperwork and then this is what they call in napoleon hill's think and grow rich this concept of burning the boats where it's like, you know, like the moment that I pressed the, the Instagram live, I was like, all right, here we go. Like there's no going back. And so the, the ty idea of burning the boats is, um, very, uh, conquistador, but it's this, this idea that when there is an army who is invading an Island, that when they pull up on the backside of the Island, before the people know that they're there, they burn all of the boats because they're like, we are capturing this island or we're dying here. We're not going home, basically. So this is where it's like, you know, I started this process of getting my animals all vaccinated and everything. And in flying, it's called the point of no return, where you've flown the plane so far that you cannot, you don't have enough gas to turn around and go back. You have to complete the journey. And so this was getting my pets vaccinated. It was like, all right, shit is real. We're doing this. Like, why would you go through all of this process if you were not actually going to move to Hawaii? So 
the, in the, in the sound healing piece, it was my harp. It was buying, buying my harp. So the harp, it's like, you know, 1.5K. And it was at the time a huge, massive investment. My partner did not want me to buy it because it was so breakable and his friend had broke one. And he just didn't think that it was a good idea. But I was like, this is my commitment to myself that is saying I am taking this shit seriously. Um, in the financial up leveling, you guys, I went from negative in my bank account to multiple six figures. It's just like the massive financial shift that has happened in my life has even astounded me. So, and I remember when I was overdrawn in my bank account and only money I had was the cash that I was getting from the sound baths that we were doing. And I was saving this cash every week because sometimes we were doing two or three sound baths a week. So I was saving all of this cash. And I remember when I had gotten a hundred dollars and I was like, okay, I'm so done. I am so done with this story of financial lack and scarcity. And I know about feng shui and my wallet that I have is beautiful and magical and I love it very much. It was this like dragon skin looking holographic iridescent thing, but it was also falling apart. So I took my $100 and I went to not TJ Maxx. I went to Macy's because that's the fanciest department store we have on Maui. I went to Macy's and I went to the, the uh, accessories department and I knew I wanted a gold wallet. And so I found, and I wanted to be particular parts about it. So I found this uh, Michael Kors gold wallet and I bought it with all of the cash that I had. And I was like, holy shit, like I can't believe that I'm spending this money that's the money that I have on this wallet. And I was like, I know that having this wallet that is this symbol to myself of my financial abundance this gold name brand wallet will increase my, it's every time I take money out of it, I'm gonna look at this wallet and be like, yes, I did that. And so, so that's like, there's multiple, you know, you know, from buying a crystal harp to buying a wallet, you know, there's multiple, multiple ways, but it's so, it's reverse engineering your own success. And really, yeah, it's total alchemy. It is, watching what you think of as symbols of success and then reverse engineering that so that you your your subconscious will then see that you have those symbols of success and then it will think that it is successful you know so this was another pattern that i recognized uh in myself was that i recognized that i noticed the pattern that a lot of the women that I thought were successful in my world had really great arms. And so I was like, okay, successful women have good arms. And so I was like, okay, in order to be successful, I just need to have nice arms, right? <laughs> and so, so I started doing more yoga. I started doing Kundalini more, you know, they talk about Kundalini arms and then ultimately I hired a personal trainer and, and I have really nice arms. <laughs> I had the same story with like having an American express credit card. I had this story in my head that people who use American express were financially successful. And I just had Visa and MasterCard at that time. And I remember actually saving the thing that came in the mail. My, my roommate got two things that came in the mail were like for, were for Amex, um, you know, offers. And I gave one to him and then I saved the other one cause he got two and I put it in my manifestation box. And I was like, one day I will have an Amex and then I will be successful. And I remember the first day that I received my own invitation to get an Amex card. And I was like, I have made it, <laughs> which is like such a mind story, you know? So it's just really 
finding you it, all of this takes so much self observation you have to really watch your own patterns and your own stories and either choose to deprogram them or like amplify them so the final piece so we have receiving divine guidance actually so we're down here because we're, we're ascending we're up leveling so we have receiving the divine guidance and then we have becoming clear in your own desires. So we have divine will and we have your personal will. Then we have the deprogramming, clearing, all letting go of all of those things that you need to let go of, whether that's mental or emotional or physical, relational or whatever, that will help you to take this next step up here. And then the next piece here is investing in your future. So making some kind of intentional, symbolic gesture to yourself that is, and oftentimes it needs to be in the physical, for me it needs to be in the physical, so every time I see that thing or I have that experience, I know that this is my intention that I'm ascending into the next level. And then the final piece, do the work do the work be relentless in doing the work that is required this is like my most recent post i am ready to take on the responsibility that is required for me to ascend to my next level so that is a huge 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 piece around ascending into any kind of next level up leveling in any kind of way is choosing to do the work, to figure out the problems, to let go of all of those old stories that it's hard or complicated or that you can't do that because of your genes or all of those old stories that it's hard or complicated or that you can't do that because of your genes or a learning disability or whatever, whatever, whatever. You let go of all of those stories and you're like, I. I'm fucking ready to do the work. I am ready to be responsible for everything that I need to be responsible for to in order to ascend into this next level. So that's this a huge piece, you know? It's like moving to Hawaii is like this whole massive transformation, you know? It's this whole multi-tiered process and of like literally getting yourself unplugged from for me unplugged from my life on the mainland and then going in you know moving to a different island moving across the ocean it's a huge multi-tiered process there was like months and months of purging and clearing and months and months of vision board after vision board and all kinds of manifestation for hawaii but it was just like all right and it was also i had to rearrange my business because I was like, I need to be able to support myself. You know, there was a time when I was clear that I was being called to Hawaii, but I still had this in-person acupuncture practice. And I was like, okay, so I'm going to have to deal with this kind of like drop off where it's like, I have a practice built up here and then it drops off and then I have to rebuild it here. But I reorganized my whole business structure to be online so that I wouldn't have to deal with that. And I was also really ready and willing to deal with all of the, the things that came with that to be able to do the work, do the work, do the work. And you have to do the work relentlessly. You know, it's like, I hear a lot of people who are like, you know, I did my first launch and like only one person signed up or I did my first launch and I didn't have the results that I wanted. And it's like, you have to be relentless. You have to be oh, like, okay, great, whatever. That launch was whatever. And now there's another launch and I will do it again 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 and I will do it again. Like you have to think about the long game and be really ready and willing to do whatever is required to hold yourself in that, to boost yourself up over that next level. Yeah, good. Ah, oh, yes. So do you guys have any questions? Relentlessly.
You have to be tenacious. You have to be relentless. Yes, yeah. So if you guys have any questions, yes, you are so welcome. Yeah, you had some really powerful insights. Thank you so much for all of your shares. That was really good. Yeah, you have to be completely and fully relentless that you are, you're willing. You are willing to be guided. You are willing to receive that divine inspiration because all of the next leveling, it's like, yeah, like moving, you know, from the mainland to Hawaii or, you know, shifting gears from coaching into sound healing or shifting gears from, you know, financial places. Um, it's really, 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 it's all, it's all this same process. It's a fractal, right? So you have this whole process with all these different steps that we went through today and there are micro levels in inside all of this. So, okay. So you're going to be applying all of this in smaller and larger, a lar larger all the time. Okay. So here's some questions here. Okay. Saturn return or any insights on Saturn. So this is actually because we're talking about responsibility and showing up and doing the work. So that's all Saturn frequency. So this is a really good question. So Saturn, this is such a good question. Okay. So Saturn is all about your sovereignty, basically. So Saturn is the Lord of karma and he's also the master builder. And so what Saturn does is that for the first 30 years of your life, you've been getting up, going to school, doing your homework, coming home. You know, you went to high school and then you went to college and then you got a job and then, you know, maybe you got married or, you know, maybe you had kids or whatever. But up until the time that you're 30, you've been really kind of like doing your life based on what the cultural norms have been. And so it's been kind of like, okay, I'm doing all of the things and then I'm supposed to be successful. And then, and you may well be very successful. Um, and what happens when we have our Saturn return around age 29, 30, 31, is that the Lord of Karma returns to the place where it was when you were born. And he says, all right, grasshopper, what have you learned? in the past 30 years. And is that which you have been living your life, you've built the foundation of your life upon, is that going to last? Saturn's all about durability. Is that going to last? Is that going to sustain you? Is that going to bring you long-term success? And Saturn, although he might be heavy and constricting and, you know, domineering and forcing you to deal with all of your authority issues, ultimately his end goal is to put you back on your throne. Saturn's ultimate end goal is you in your sovereignty because you cannot build anything in your life that will last and be sustainable physically, energetically, emotionally, mentally sustainable. That means you'll be having fun doing it for a long time. If it's not coming from your own authenticity, if the foundation of your life is built on what someone else, the patriarchy, the culture of control, like the culture that you're in, whatever, your parents, your coworkers, your friend, what you think a good girl is. It, if, if, if your foundation for your life is built on anything other than your own authentic desires, it's going to crumble. And so Saturn will do the work of doing that for you. So I always say Saturn goes through, he takes two weeks to go through a degree in your chart and he goes through and he lumbers along with his full weight and then he comes to each degree every two weeks he changes sign until there's a retrograde he's there for eight weeks and then he goes Ugh! 
and he puts his whole weight down on that particular part of your chart that's like a seam in your hot air balloon and so he pushes on it and he puts his whole weight down on that particular part of your chart that's like a seam in your hot air balloon and so he pushes on it he pushes on that seam and if it will not hold his weight because it's built on someone else's idea of success it he will rip through it and then you'll be like oh fuck like now i have to i have to re-sew i have to re-stitch i have to do all this work takes time and energy and effort all saturn things to be able to build your life according to your sovereignty so in a nutshell <laughs> all right um i'm just hanging out until this thing kicks me off so we'll see other question um I do come on and do lives. It's just kind of random. I think I'm going to do more because uh, we're coming into the close of the Sovereign Enrollment. P.S. If you did not know, my brand new course, Sovereign, speaking of Saturn and Sovereignty, is open for enrollment. The doors are closing on Wednesday at 6 p.m. Pacific time. You can find out all about it through the link in my bio. And it is basically all about everything that we talked about today. <clears throat> ascending into your next level, stepping into your sovereignty, reclaiming your power, deprogramming all of the shoulds about what you think your life should be and putting on your motherfucking crown. Okay. When you're in the phase of listening and going slow and receiving versus versus relentless masculine up level. It's the so so the whole process that we went through today is combined masculine and feminine. In the beginning, it's feminine because it is that divine guidance and it is, it is listening deeply to the desires and the energetic invitations that are coming from the universe. So that on the one spectrum of everything that we went through today, it, that's the deeply feminine part. And then we go through all of these different parts, which are both masculine and feminine. And then, then there is the, there's the relentless, the relentless, the relentless manifesting, like doing the work. And I would also just, inc I just really think that it's like, we're really in a space now where we're being invited to explore our definitions of duality. And so for me, when I'm in that space of relentless showing up, relentless doing the work, relentless manifesting, I can look at that as masculine energy, but I can also, this is one of the things that we're gonna talk about in Sovereign, is the shift from discipline to devotion. So when I'm looking at selling my courses, when I'm looking at doing the work, whether it's creating a course, selling a course, something that you would say would be masculine energy, I often reframe it. That would be like discipline, which is like a masculine thing. You have to be focused, you have to be disciplined, you have to do the work, and it has to be action oriented. But for me, this is really a deeply feminine devotion where it's like, this is my altar. You know, you guys have seen my desk, it's a massive altar. And so I'm praying I am doing masculine things, but I'm also in this space of deep prayer. And it is my devotion to my dharma, to the creative expression of my soul, that is bringing forth the inspired actions that I'm doing, you know? So it's like, there's, there's many different ways to meditate. You can be sitting in meditation. You can be doing yoga and that's meditation. You can be doing altar work and that's meditation. You know, the lighting of the candles and the saying of the prayers, like this is an activity, but it's also a deeply meditative thing. You can be knitting and that's a meditation, but it's also action. Um, so I think it's every time that I have a place where I am wanting to, I have some story that I can't do something because 
of whatever kind of story that I have, I always question it because it's like you can be in, I feel like you can be integrated and you can be in that phase of deep listening and going slow and receiving and you can also serve your people. I don't think that those things have to be exclusive. You know, and as we were saying, it's like there are these different parts of the the up-leveling process and that it's fractal, right? So this whole process that we went through exists inside this tiny place of that process. So it's really all in this morphic shifting place. And you can totally have parts of your day where you're being deeply feminine and then you have parts of your day when you're being expressively masculine. Um, you sometimes feel overwhelmed with too much you don't want to forget. Oh yeah, so I'm, I am going to be saving this and posting, posting this in my Insta TV. Um, Afraid of other people's image of you changing. Afraid if you really crawl out of the cave, you'll never be able to crawl back in. Yeah, that's what you did when you came out your mama. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's like, it's scary as fuck. And you want to be alive, right? You want to be out in the world doing the thing. <laughs> You know, you, this is this stepping into your sovereignty, ascending to these next levels. You have to be so committed to your dharma that you are willing to take little pieces of cotton, put them in your ears and say, la, 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 right? So... Would you, are you living your life for other people or are you here to accomplish something that your soul came to do? Like, what is the payoff really? Like, you know, are you willing to, to not do your Dharma to do, are you willing to let another lifetime pass because you were too afraid to step out and to really be who you really are, to change from a caterpillar into a butterfly and inspire thousands of other caterpillars to also turn into butterflies. It's like, what is the trade-off? What is the trade-off, really? Like, are, how much more time, how much more life force are you willing to sacrifice because of what you think somebody else will think about you? You have to say, I am sorry. I do not choose you. I choose my dharma. I choose my soul purpose. I choose what I came here to do. And fear will always be there. Fear will always be there. And you will still do it. They say do it scared. Does the process always have to be super intense? Okay, so the sound healing transformation, that was fucking intense. That was fucking intense. But the financial upgrade, that whole process was much more flowy. So I just say it's that the process gets to be easier and easier the more that you pay attention to the signs and symbols that are coming into your life and the more that you actively participate and dance with the invitations that are coming. You know, it's like, like we're talking about Saturn again. <clears throat> we're about to get kicked off of here, by the way. So talking about Saturn again, if you don't participate with Saturn, he will come in the front door, go into your room, find the closet that you're hiding in, open it up, pull you out from behind all of the clothes and drag you out by your hair. Like Saturn is the Lord of Karma. He is not to be fucked with. Or... You know that he's coming. You go out to the sidewalk to greet him with your notebook and your books and your computer and your garden gloves and you're ready. You're like, Saturn, I see that you're coming and I'm ready to do the work. What would you have me do? And so when you are ready and willing to do the work, the Saturn transit does not have to pull your, pull your hair. 
Um, okay, so you guys had so many amazing questions and we're going to get kicked off. So ask me, I'm gonna post this in my Insta TV. Ask your question again in the comments underneath there and I will be happy to answer them again. I love you.